from Hollywood, it's Flash Friday. Here's my ASS. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show with wide open telephones. Anything goes here, anything at all, at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. On this Flash Friday, it's Alfred on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Alfred. How's it hanging, Tom? Hanging right, Alfred, as usual. Yeah, just want to let you know, I got Flash down in La Cienega and Cadillac right to the freeway. Really? That's like right by the 10 freeway. Yes. It was a great pair of C's, uh, no tan line. Really? Really, Tom. What's going on over there? Uh, it's a green Mazda minivan. Uh, her and her girlfriend, they just yelled out, like us? And I was like, I just was a stunned because after she said, like us, she showed me her rack. I love that. Yeah, Tom, it's great. So anybody out in that area, look out for a green Mazda minivan. Sounds good to me. Now, Alfred, if you were listening to Power 106, would you be getting bare breasts under the freeway there? I don't know. That's right. <laughs> All right, Tom, can you take, uh, take me out? I know this is tasteless. Uh, you this out? Oh, that is tasteless. Lacey Peterson style. Sure, we can do it, but it's tasteless. Ever. Hey. Ever. Ever miss you, Peterson. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. It's Steve on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's up, Tom? How are you? Doing okay, Steve. I'm actually uh, calling you in in regards to uh, the kids that you're taking to court or you're taking legal action on. Yeah. I, I was curious. Uh, what What are their ages? Are they uh, Are they under eighteen? Or no, no, late? no, no. They are. Uh, I would say they are around thirty, maybe uh, uh, late twenties, something like that. So, so these are guys that are basically partying through the night. And if you went over to knock on the door. Basically, you'd probably hear, screw this guy, and they'd probably continue to take bong tokes. Exactly. And uh, continue drinking and probably get a little louder, right? What they don't know is I've got 13 video cameras around my house. I've got video of everybody leaving, and it's time-coded. So I've got the evidence that at 4.27 a.m., there was the crowd all leaving the house right about the time the cops would have been arriving. Well, I, I agree with you 100% because that's the only way you're going to get through to them. At least they'll think about it if, if some kind of legal action is taken. And, you know, the thing is people don't follow through with legal action when they do that kind of stuff. Oh, I and do because I've got 12 attorneys on retainer with a lot of free time. And I'm telling you, I'm coming for these three. Well, good. And I think you should. I agree 100%. We, uh, we've had the same situation, and I'm only 28 years old but uh, or 29 years old, and I work six days a week. And I don't work at Burger King where I can get up at 12 noon and go to work for a six-hour shift. And when people are partying at 2 a.m., they have no respect for anybody that's got to get up and work in the morning to make their money because they don't care about it. Well, the thing is, there are laws about disturbing the peace. Now, I really don't care. If, you, if you're if you playing music at 11, 12, 1 o'clock at night, I'm cool with it. I'm fine with that. But 4.30 a.m., you got to be kidding me. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And you no know, hire a club, go have a rave somewhere. But this is a residential yeah. neighborhood. you got to be kidding. Yeah, I agree 100%. I just want to let you know, go for it, and we back you 100% on that. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. And now time for another edition of Chicks on Politics. Here's Shannon on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. I love the show. Thank you. 
Hi. Um, okay, I have a question. Who yeah. is Ron Paul? Because every state that I have traveled to, Philadelphia, D.C., I mean, everywhere, I see signs for it. And just right now on the 405 in L.A., there's tons of people on an overpass holding signs and waving flags. And I've never seen this guy. I've never heard his debates. I have no idea what, he's, what he represents. Well, he's been, in the de- he's been in Republican debates. Uh, you just don't watch them. <laughs> I probably don't. You're right. There we go. Because you're female. You've got geni- you know, you're a female genitalia. <laughs> Yeah. And, and that means watching, you know, CNN or the Vox News channel, you're hardwired to turn the channel when you see that. <laughs> right? Oh, well, I, I catch some stuff. It depends. I mean, if, if it's something like I'm really into Obama, I've read all his books. Um, I, I like his viewpoints because he seems very family oriented. And I like the fact that he's trying to get America back to, you know, hometown America. Yeah, how's he, like how, how, how is he going to do that again? <laughs> I, you know, he's got all these different ideas, but who knows if it will really work. All right, well, so. uh, enlighten me. I'd like to know. what. How's he going to do that? Well, God, I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now. He's putting me on the spot. <laughs> Come on, it's Chicks on Politics. I want you to tell me uh, what Obama's going to do to bring us back to hometown America. What does that even mean? Well, he's supposedly, he, he doesn't really, he's not really for the war. He doesn't really believe in, you know, raising all these taxes and adjusting all these prices so that families can't survive. You know, he wants to to bring everything back down to a level of what it was, you know, back in the 50s when it was easy for families to have a life together, you know, and he's about, like, religion, if, you know, that appeals to anybody. So he wants to go back to the McCarthy era and racial discrimination those days? He wants to go back to that? Well, not not dis- not discriminatory ways, but as far as just so that families can raise their kids in the type of environment that you know that my parents were raised in and their parents. But, were but he doesn't exactly tell you how he's going to do that. No, I guess he doesn't. Or he does, but you didn't bother to read it. Probably not. There we go. <laughs> That's my girl. <laughs> I'd be real disappointed. You know, you must be pretty attractive because the fact that you know nothing about this indicates to me a level of attractiveness. Maybe. But maybe, lo- but maybe, too, it makes me look good when I'm reading the books, you know, sitting in the airport waiting for my flight. And people uh-huh. think that I'm intelligent. By the way, Barack Obama, <laughs> is, it's, pretty, it's, pretty much, uh, it's pretty much a consensus right now that he's falling uh, out of contention. Um, I well, I happen to see something on the news like everybody's saying Hillary will probably wind up with you know majority votes because I guess she's pretty popular right now. So they're saying that that may be a reason that she's beating him because everybody likes her for some reason. Well, I think it's too early to tell who will win, but I w- put it this way: Ron Paul. That has to be one of these guys in every election, the guy who will never win. Well, there's a few very loud nut jobs out there who will stand at freeway overpasses with signs and wave at you and stuff. But uh, trust right. me, Ron Paul, write this down. Ron Paul will never, ever, ever be the president of the United States, ever. I rarely use uh, the words like never or always or all uh-huh. or none. He will never be the president, just like Jesse Jackson will never be the president. Al Sharpton will never be the president. Okay. All right. Barack Obama. Uh, he's he's getting there, but he's not there yet. But I'm telling you, Ron Paul definitely will never, ever. Ralph Nader will never be the president, ever. Okay. Yeah, I just, I just never heard of him, so I was just curious. Yes. So, okay, I have another another comment. What is with all these people leaving their children in cars lately? Well, it's not a new phenomenon. You've just been reading about it recently. Well, it, it seems like there's been more of it recently, and, you know, they're bringing more attention to it, but I don't understand how people leave their kids in cars. Because, they, because the cost of child care is expensive, and they want to go out drinking and gambling, go into strip clubs at night. So why let kids uh, get in the way? That's ridiculous. Well, we heard about this one mom. I guess she left her kid in Target recently, and she went in the store, came out a half hour later, hysterical. Oh, I forgot my kid, forgot my kid. I've never forgotten child i may have forgotten the stuff that goes with my kid like his diaper bag and stuff like that but i would never forget my child and when you're driving how do you not when you're pulling into the parking lot of the shopping center how do you not look like you have to be pretty stupid to not be paying attention to where you're driving for i think day. i think people have kids because you know it's a ritual it's something the uh family wants you to do or something your friends are all doing i i, I really think a lot of people have kids not because they love these children 
Oh, but because they need to have the experience of having a baby and having a baby shower and uh, having people give them gifts and having a christening. Blah, right. blah, blah. Okay, so let, let, let's say these jerks that do have kids or that do, you know, they're just having them for the sake of having them, whatever the reason may be, and they're leaving them in cars and yet they're not, they're not getting prosecuted because they're saying, oh, well, it wasn't their fault or there were circumstances. I think that's crap. I agree, but and the kids should be as taken usual. Away are involved we were always finding excuses why women do bad things well not only that but there's a guy who did it too recently and they were saying you know oh but he's a good dad otherwise blah 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 but it doesn't matter what about the the um the vice principal of the school or principal of the school that did it left her infant child in the car because she was running late to work like yeah what kind of crap is that and she's supposed to be running at school and she's not going to get in trouble little kentucky fried baby there very nice it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. But anyway, keep up the good work, and thank you for talking to me. Well, thank you, Shen. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Time for another edition of Chicks on Politics. Mika on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mika. Once again, second-time caller, long-time listener. Thank you. I think you're an ass, but I love you. <laughs> So, oh, I'm an a-hole. Um, I'm I'm a, just, I'm a bastard. I'm a son of a bitch. I, I, I love you. You know, don't women always love some of the bitches? Yes. So anyway, um, I just went to visit my grandfather recently in Louisiana. He's a big Ron Paul fan. I had never even heard of Ron Paul. So I was like, what? Who the hell is Ron Paul? So he told me, you know, he's going to have him. He's like, this is what I'm going to do at the border. Just have the military there and, like, shooting people at the border. And I'm like, okay, Grandpa. Like, right? It's like, Ron Paul is not the person I want to be voting for. Yeah, these are the people who voted for Ross Perot. These are the people exactly. who voted for Jerry it's Brown. Like, these are the lunatics. Blue. These are the I'm lunatics. Like, yeah, I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> he's he's uh, 91, and he's still in the same old politics. I'll that's bet, the way I'll it's going to stay, and that's the way it's going to be. But I'm like, hell no with this Ron Paul. We business. need to abolish public schools and the post office. Yes, and abolish the military. And, uh, yes. blah, blah. <laughs> you know, shoot them at the border. Yeah. So. Good luck on that. Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to call and say that's all I thought about that. Why? Thank you. <laughs> Tom Likas. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-866. Tom, I just want to bring up the uh, one of the more obvious points to you, but may not be to the... Uh... Oh, my God, Tom, I just got flashed on the freeway. No, really? Oh, oh hang on a minute. <laughs> nice rack! <laughs> no, she's honking. Oh. Absolutely, this is perfect. Okay, my day is complete. Oh, excellent. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Flash Friday at 1 800 5800 Tom. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, joining me in studio, Luke Robotai, who is here representing the Los Angeles Kings, but this time not as a player. Good to see you, Luke. Hey, good to see you. You know, nobody's flashed me so far. What, what's listen, the, what's I'm the deal? I'm a little bit upset about that. Do you have your headlights on every Friday? I, I, I turn them on. Nobody's flashed yet. <laughs> Damn. I'm going to try again today. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a shot. Uh, now, 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 Luke Robitaille, for people who don't know about the Los Angeles Kings, first of all, um, hockey uh, has been on the upswing in this country. Uh, hockey had some labor problems. They shut down for a season. It was terrible. It was like the low point in, in the National Hockey League history, I think. Uh, but the last couple of years with uh, salary cap, uh, new financial stability for a lot of teams, uh, hockey's on the upswing. Uh, there's been a lot of excitement this season about uh, professional hockey in the United States. And the Kings and the Anaheim Ducks opened last season, uh, uh, this season in London, England, uh, played two games before sold-out crowds in the, the brand-new O2 Arena. It was spectacular. Uh, and, Luke, what was it like sitting in the stands watching the game? Well, it was great for me. I mean, you know, 
we had enough Kings fans there that they recognized me, but it, like I had room to watch the game. It's kind of fun to watch the team in the stands. You know, a lot of time at Staples Center, I'm not able to do that. So uh, it was a lot of fun to do, and it was a great building. I mean, it was it was amazing to see how many jerseys there were from every team around like Europe, everywhere. It was oh, pretty yeah. neat. It was a great event. I didn't know London had that many hockey teams. I know, and did you see the kids that played between periods? Oh, that yeah. That was pretty cool, you know, because those were kids, local kids, and they were pretty good, so it was neat. It was pretty amazing. Now, you have gone from uh, being a player, and not just a player, but you're heading to the Hall of Fame. You won't say it, so I will. <laughs> and and you've gone from being uh, a Hall of Fame a hockey player uh, to a new job. And, and what, tell us about your new job uh, with AEG and the Kings. Uh, I mean, it's it's mostly with the Kings. I mean, it's uh, president of business operation. And basically what I'm trying to do is... Uh, our our company AEG who owns the Kings uh, you know has been so busy building the world <laughs> rebuilding the world I yes think. you know they got LA Live the Staples Center they got the arena in London and the O2 they got you know they're they're doing a lot of concerts they're promoting concerts with AEG Live and so forth and so AEG was started because of the Kings and along the way because the company got so big so fast it lo- it, the Kings lost a little bit of its focus it's just that it wasn't anybody's fault it was just that everybody was trying to do so many different things so now we're rebuilding the Kings where we're a standalone franchise and we're using AEG as a big brother which is a great big brother to have and uh, that's kind of my job to uh, put this organization and be a standalone organization. And so like that, we're more like any other team would be where we're really focused on what we're doing. Now, I'm, I'm a lifelong hockey player, and your job is to, among other things, sell hockey mm-hmm. uh, to people who haven't been or people who haven't come in a while. Uh, you've got some special challenges, but tell people what they're missing. Well, you know, everybody knows our game live is the greatest game to see live. I mean, the, the the biggest thing that we need to do as a league, like I go to the Board of Governors meeting with the league and so forth, and is to reproduce that on TV. I think we, we need to start to listen to the right crowd, which is the Hollywood crowd. Producers, directors, they know how to sell things, like Jerry Prockheimer's The World and so forth. These guys, when they make a movie and so forth, just the camera angle, they know what to do, how, how you get a certain vibe when you watch a movie. And we need to start listening to those guys so we can reproduce that on the ice or when you watch a game on TV. Because as great of a game it is to, to watch live, we need to find a way for people to enjoy it when they watch it on TV. Because I've never had a problem, and I know you've brought in a lot of new people to our games. When Once you see our game once, twice, or three times, they understand. They like to watch it on TV, but you have to see it live once. Yeah, and uh, I do agree with you that on television, they've done a lousy job over the years. I do think in Canada, they've got better television coverage, but even so, um, at the same time that you improve the, the camera angles mm-hmm. and uh, what you're showing at any given time, you also have to improve, I think, the way you explain the game to people who don't understand offsides and uh, other uh, finer points of the game. Yeah, you either do that or you let them fight all the time. Right, exactly. <laughs> you throw a fight every five minutes, everybody will watch it. That's exactly Exactly right. <laughs> no, we, we do. We need to understand, to explain the game. And uh, there's another thing, too, that our game is, is a, over 100 years old. You know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, it's an old-fashioned game. And for years, the NHL really didn't try to promote players. And at the end of the day, you, you always, when you talk about a sporting event, you, you talk about the great player you've seen. You saw Joe Montana. You saw Terry Bradshaw or, or Wayne Gretzky or so forth. And so we need to start marketing more players so people, when they, they want to see on TV, they heard about, like, a, uh, as an example, on our team, we have a kid, Kopitar. So once you hear his name, suddenly you're flipping channel and you hear, you say, you see the LA Kings. I heard there's a kid there. And then you start watching a little bit more. I mean, I really believe that makes a difference, too. I think uh, to a certain extent, uh, because I've known many players, a lot of these guys have great personalities. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't really come out when you see them because they're either being interviewed after a period when people are, like, focused on playing and not not show business or marketing or or in the bathroom. Right, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) I, I mean, the fact is, a lot of these guys would be great spokespeople for the sport if they were put in front of a camera under the right circumstance. Yeah, I mean, it's important to get those guys out there. I mean, DX excuse of people saying that, you know, we wear helmets. I mean, football players wear a helmet. I mean, I hear it too. Like, people start saying, well, we can't see the puck. And I'm like, I watch football. And half the time, I don't know where the ball is. You know, when the, when the running yeah. back's carrying it, I don't know what's going on. Except they explain to me after that on the replay. And then those guys are seems to always be out there and you see them without helmets, you start knowing them. And that's what we need to start doing with our players and our game.
The other thing about hockey that I think people need to know, because I, I for 20 years, I've gone to uh, almost every game yeah. playing, um, is that, um, first of all, um, if you go to a baseball game here in L.A., let's say you go to Dodger Stadium or you go to Angel Stadium, you watch a game, people are talking, they're getting up, they're walking around. The action is so slow, yeah. you could go wait in that line for a Dodger dog for two innings and miss absolutely nothing. <laughs> and, and with hockey, it's totally different. It, you can't walk away from the action. You can't get up in the middle of the action. And, in fact, the action is so uh, so fast and, and it's coming at you all the time. Uh, it's the one game where they don't let you come back to your seats until the whistle is blown because you might walk in front of somebody the split second a goal is scored or there's a fight. Exactly. I mean, that's that's the beauty of our game. I mean, there's action nonstop. And, uh, you know, for the people that don't know our game, that's that's the greatest thing about our game. I mean, it just never stops. And, you know, you can watch a hit in football but you might see 10 in, in the span of one shift for us. I mean, it's really it's really an amazing game to watch live. I mean, I remember Wayne Gretzky used to say, this is the greatest game in the world, and we need to start working and marketing it. And he was great at it. But now I think we, a lot of us that are involved in the business side of the game need to start to pay attention to that because that's it's a great game to see. And for people to start seeing it, we never seem to lose that the fans, the new fans. Well, I think the NBA went through a similar period after Michael Jordan retired. Yeah. Uh, and all the marketing was about Michael Jordan see Michael Jordan, see the next Michael mm -hmm. Jordan, see a guy who's like Michael Jordan. And once Michael Jordan was gone, uh, the NBA found other successors to talk about. Other yeah. people, Shaquille O'Neal and what have you, mm -hmm. became uh, the new uh, Kobe Bryant, became yeah. uh, the new uh, uh, marketing stars of yeah. the NBA. After Wayne Gretzky retired, uh, the NHL has tried all kinds of, I think, some bizarre mm -hmm. marketing plans. But the reality yeah. is you got to sell the players and the game. Yeah, you got. I mean, because you know everybody knows about the team, but you know to you know in the defense of the NHL, you know since the lockout at least, you know I think there was a lockout coming and it was hard and so forth. But now since the lockout, it's really the first time where you know from the ownership standpoint of view, from the manager standpoint of view, and the players and the union, everybody's working towards one goal and it's to sell the game. The reason is the players are doing this is because they participate on the revenue, which is yeah. it's a great situation right now. So I I think in the next three to four years we'll see a big difference because the players are willing to do a lot more, and the union is letting us do a lot more than they've ever had in the past. A lot of times it wasn't really the players because it's well known the hockey players are the greatest, they're the easiest. But a lot of times it was cut out by the union certain rules. But now it's all about growing the revenue, and I think it's going to make a difference for the future. Now um, I remember. Remember when you won the Stanley Cup with the Detroit Red Wings, mm -hmm. you brought it to L.A. That's yeah. what you did with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that was the only way we could see the Stanley Cup. <laughs> and now at least the Ducks won it, so it has been seen around Southern California a little bit. Yeah, what, too much. <laughs> what, the, what, what does that do to the sense of urgency? of? The, and this is the question I think Kings fans are asking. What does this do to the sense of urgency of the people who, who run AEG and the mm -hmm. Kings? Well, I mean, I think for us, from the Kings' point of view, or any franchise, when your neighbor wins it, I mean, it makes you want to be good and be good fast. You know, you have no choice. We need to compete with those guys they're our rival i mean this year we're, we're working at uh, doing a rivalry with them and and uh, you know we we know we can't afford to say well we're building and wait three four five years you know it just doesn't happen that way now and we know you know it might take us a year or two or whatever or you know three at max but we know we need to be good this year. We need. We know we need to beat those guys this year. We need to get in the playoffs this year. And you know, once you're in the playoffs in our league, and you can beat anybody, you know. And that's, I mean, that they're forcing us to be good real fast, which is it's a great pressure. Well, I think the most important thing that you have to show, and I'm saying this now as a fan rather mm -hmm. than as a radio guy, uh, the most important thing you have to show is forward motion. A radio guy. I a like radio that. guy. <laughs> That's what I wrote on my occupation when we were traveling to Europe. You know, I'm an occupation radio guy. That's what it's at. But uh, you have to show forward motion. Uh, uh, the Kings have a lot of new young players, and some of them are really, really good. Mm -hmm. And I think, wh why don't you tell us about the players the Kings are excited about? Well, well for us, I mean, we, we have a slew of under 25-year-old players in our sports it's, it's a very young age and so we have you know the way it works in our sport our top two lines are scoring lines and we, there's six players in our top two lines and four of them under 25 years old with we're the only team in the NHL that, that can we can honestly say we we have that 
but the, the the thing is they're stars. You know, they're players that are in the top ten or top twenty scores in our league out of seven hundred players. And then, uh, but I think the most exciting thing for every one of our fans are saying. I mean, our GM sometimes gets nervous about that because you you never want to put pressure on the kids. But the reality of it is, for the next two to three years, if we compare hockey to football. Our quarterback is probably a kid like Anze Kopitar, who's our number one center, and he's he's one of our best player offensively right now, and he's 20 years old. And then our best future defenseman for the future, his name's Jack Johnson, who was a star in college. He was here last Friday. He was? Jack was, Oh, that's yeah. right. He was with you last Friday. That's yeah. right. That's right. Guys were running around town to get into you. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. So that kid is like, uh, you know, like a Reggie Bush in a way, like a, you know, a running back. And you want to build your team around that kid. Usually, if you have one of those two on your team, you can build your team around. We're lucky at the two key positions we have him. And then on top of it, if you you talk about the, the ultimate guy to build your team in, in our sport is a goaltender. And we have a 19-year-old that played opening night in London who was amazing. You know, we don't know what's going to happen this year because we want to be patient with him. But right now, he's showing he's as good as anybody, and including guys that are 27 and 28 years old. And, you know, he's so we really believe this kid can take us to the next level in the future. So if you look at the way our team is, when when you talk about building a team, you want one of those spots to be your key spot. And right now... We have those three spots covered with guys that are 20 years old or, or, or younger, which is, we feel very, very fortunate right now. Tomorrow night is opening night, and uh, are there tickets still available for opening There's night? There's a few tickets available, but you better call quick because it's going to be a fun night tonight. We've got a lot of new stuff this year, game entertainment. We're doing all kinds of stuff. That's great. <laughs> and Stable Center is a great venue if you haven't been. It's, it's definitely a place you want to see. And, and for hockey, it's like a pinball machine with video and music and lights, and it's just going all the time. We've got a new lights, new sound. We're bringing back a Marcel Dion, who was one of our legends from our Marty McSorry for the fans that are more familiar with it. They're coming for, for the uh, opening face-offs and then the introduction of the players. It's, that place is going to be rocking tomorrow night. It's uh, It's got to be somewhere around the 40th anniversary of the first time the Kings took the ice. Uh, where was that? The Long Beach Arena they played their first season? It's actually a 40... It's all screwed up because of that darn lockout. Right. But it was 40 years it's, ago this year, here's, wasn't it? Here's what my big marketing ploy is. <laughs> <laughs> it's our fifth decade. Starting our fifth decade. Yes. <laughs> which is what you do when it's been 40 years. Exactly. <laughs> So we don't really know if it's year 40 or 41, so yes. screw it. Let's just well, call it our fifth decade. That's why I'm saying it was 40 years ago. It was 1967 and the Kings. Exactly. Right. I don't remember now if the Kings played at the sports arena. They played at both, but where did they play first? The Long, Long Beach Arena? Or the, the Someone will call us and tell us. Yeah, because it was, I know it was a sports arena for a while, but it might have been in Long Beach. You might be right. Yeah, first few games, mm-hmm. then the sports arena, something like that. And but Jack can't cut, but build the, uh, the fabulous forum. That's right. That's <laughs> right. They, they had yellow pants in those days. Exactly. <laughs> now, now, I saw you in your first season when you were playing at the Forum, yep. and, and you know the way it was back then? You know, you buy a ticket. It's like the old joke. Yeah, you five tell bucks. Them, what time does the game start? They say, what time can you get here? And and you can pretty much sit and pick your own section back then. I think people have no idea that yeah, the Kings today draw almost twice as many people as they did in that. Oh, yeah. When I started, or we were drawing probably nine, ten thousand 10,000 at best. I mean, the, the big story was they had these college price, and all the college kids were coming. And I think it was two fifty or three bucks right. or five bucks, whatever it was. They said and then, upstairs. Then by the second period, everybody would run down and get these great seats that were <laughs> that were retailing for sixty bucks. And uh, but yeah, we you know we average over seventeen thousand a night, and uh, you know it's uh, you know we've had our fans have been very very patient for us. So it's it's about time we start paying attention to them. You included, Tom. I've been here for a long time. <laughs> You've been very very patient, yes, sir. Yes, I have. I've seen uh, I've seen it all. Believe me. Like right, the Kings tomorrow night are playing at Staples Center. Uh, the phone number, if you want to get tickets, and there's a few tickets left for the game, is eight 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 Kings L A. You call there, and they will hook you up with tickets uh, for tomorrow night's opener against the St. Louis. Blues and their coach, the former coach of the Kings, Andy Murray. It's tomorrow night at Staples Center. Yep. It'll Thanks. be a good night. Thanks for coming in. All right. Thank you, my friend. It's good to see you. Good to see you, too. Luke Robitaille. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. If you had sex with me because I said I was a doctor, by the time you find out I'm not a doctor, guess what? I had sex with you. I got what I wanted. Yeah, Next what? victim. The Tom Likas Show. Our thanks, Ken, to Luke Robitaille. We'll see you at the hockey game tomorrow night. We have a suite tomorrow. I've got my own seats tomorrow. 
God. Do we know that many hot chicks, Gary? Do we know that many? Sweet holds 24 people. Wow. Let's say hello here to uh, Tommy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's Tom? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I kind of, I need some advice. Uh, I, my buddy, he's been hanging out with this chick since they've been kids, and I work with him. And uh, I went, and I've hung out with this chick a couple times with him, and he left, uh, that, like, last week we're all hanging out, and he left, and I ended up hooking up with her. And I've talked to her since, and she's saying that she missed her period and that she's only been with me and that it's my kid and stuff and that she's pregnant. She's already gone to the doctors, and I don't know what to do, but I, I'm about to hop in the shower and go over there to her house. Uh, did you use a condom? That's a negative. Why not? I, I, I just didn't have one at the time. And th then you don't have sex. Uh, I was being stupid, dude. Yeah, you were being stupid. Do you don't know what to do? I don't know what to do, man. I can't even like. Well, how long have you been, how long have you been listening to this show? About a year. What do we tell you about condoms? Always wear them. So why did you have sex without a condom? No. I don't know her that well, though. Like. So what? I'm not for sure if it's mine or not. Not I mean, the point. Why did you have sex without a condom? I don't know. What should I say to her, though? Like, what, did you think you knew more than I did? Oh, and I'm only 18. I don't care. 18. You're, you're old enough to vote. You're old enough to sign a contract. Don't use that as an excuse. You've been listening to the show for a year. You heard me say always, 100% of the time, use a condom. Oh, should I do the Hail Mary? You don't even know her. I don't know. I can't even let my friend know. He can't find out. Well, th th that's the least of your problems. I got lots of problems right now. Well, you're an idiot, and you deserve everything you're getting. Oh, what should I do? I mean, what should you do? I don't know what to do. You need to try to talk her into an abortion. That's what you need to do. Good luck on that. She, she keeps telling me, like, uh, my buddy says she's like a hardcore Christian all that. He goes to church with her and Yeah, stuff. well, a lot of the hardcore Christians, they love to fornicate. I don't know if she'll be uh, up for abortion, though. Well, that, that, then if she doesn't have an abortion, what else can you do? The state. That dead talk going to protect you. <laughs> oh, man. You deserve what you're getting. You deserve it. Uh, you go and pay and pay. Oh, man, I don't know what to do. This is terrible. Now you knew what to do, but you didn't do it. I wish I would have listened to you. Yeah, I bet you do. Now you're getting exactly what you deserve. Man, sucks. All my advice to all those guys out there, listen to Tom. I warned you. I didn't listen. You thought you knew more than I did. I was wrong. You were a dope. And oh. now you're going to pay. You're going to grow up real fast now, little boy. Because now you're going to have to get a real job and you're going to have to pay. Oh, man. I'm not even out of high school yet. Good work, Ace. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm, all, I'm almost enjoying this, you know, because you had the information and you ignored it. Now you're going to find out what happens when you ignore my advice. Oh, man. Will you take me out bonk style with the oh, Jesus? I think the oh, Jesus belongs first, but what the hell? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. 1 800 5 800 Tom is our telephone number. Here comes David on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Dave. Dave. Hey, how are you doing, man? Doing great. Good. Hey, uh, we, we've been producing some stuff for uh, the uh, Tom Likas not so accepted uh, venue. 
Wait a minute, wait a minute. The, 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 you cut out right at the board, but you, you're producing some stuff for what now? Well, like for uh, Tom Likas' not accepted venue. A Tom Likas' not accepted venue. You mean yeah. where we are? Uh, oh, you mean where we are? Yeah, exactly. Oh, the place, the place we can't mention? Exactly. We're doing yeah. some work for the company uh, whose movie studio we're broadcasting from. This is true, yes. Uh-huh. And even though the whole world knows where it is, I'm not allowed to say where we are. Uh, that would be the exact uh, quote, yes. Yes. Okay. So I, I want to know, how can we make you our vindictive, like, we want to make you our presidential candidate? I think I've got a little too much baggage to be a presidential candidate. Divorced four times. I've smoked weed at some point in the last two months, and everybody knows it. Yeah. Um, I've had um, I've paid for four abortions, and I'm proud of it. I don't know. I, I, mean, I think that makes you everything that everyone wants to represent about you and who loves you and represents America. That's it. That's it. Well, the thing is, I think most people in America are in denial because this is a hard drinking, screw happy country uh, where we love to say, "Ooh, drinking, drink responsibly." Ooh, sex wrong. People should no sex on TV. Ooh, vile, vulgar, disgusting. Ooh, I mean that, that's how we are in this country. Uh, are you tell me you we can't support you as a. Presidential candidate. If you want to support me as a write-in, I I I will serve if you can get me elected. Yes. I mean, you're you're right behind Ron Paul right now. Right behind Ron Paul puts me pretty low on the list. (laughs) (laughs) That puts me below Mike Huckabee, for God's sake. On the roll. What's that? I want you on the roll. I, I you know again. Uh, if 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 you can get me elected the right ends, I will. I promise I will serve my country. All right. So you tell me what we have to do to get that. Oh, I don't know. I'm not a political expert. I'm a guy with a microphone. Well, <laughs> that's the same thing. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> <laughs> I am, I know nothing about it. Oh uh, no, you know everything about it. I mean, we need you. We need you to be our spokesperson. I am prepared to serve. Well, As I we always say, I'll be firm but fair, but mostly firm. Yeah, well, we want both. You know, we want you to be firm and serving. Yes, I'll be serving America. It's public service, and I will be firm. Well, yeah, let's get you right, right in. Okay. By the way, are we smoking weed tonight or are we boozing? What are we doing tonight? We're we're doing both, actually. Okay. Yeah, I kind of could tell. Yeah. Hey, can, can you take me out like OJ style? Of course I can take you out OJ style. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, here you go. That was not approved by Ron Goldman, I don't think. (laughs) I'm waiting for that call. (laughs) Not that it's going to stop us from playing, but I'm waiting for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let me get Missy on here. Missy, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi, good. You know, I've heard a lot of your callers. And one thing comes to mind. You can't have respect or success without responsibility. And? And I was just thinking about those. You were talking about those teenagers next door. They're not teenagers. These are guys. They're not teenagers or adults. They're in their late 20s or early 30s or both. Oh, good. Then they can learn a valuable lesson. Keep bugging the police until they show up. Oh no! I'm, or, I'm going. I'm going directly to one of the biggest law firms in America. I would basically just, you know, get them. They're not going to be having any time. The they're not going to be having any time to be film producers or anything else, because they're going to be doing depositions up the wazoo. They're going to be uh, all tied up for what? 
I just I think it's funny how a lot of these people that call your show to there and say, "Oh, I have this problem or that problem or whatever," and none of them are willing to take responsibility. Well, there's a lot of that out there, dear. Thanks for the call. The Tom Likas Show.